All right, welcome back, Lube Tubers, to the Get the Net Fishing Podcast. We got Tyler Williams, Bassmaster Elite Series rookie, coming up right away. Before we get into that, we're going to talk about some craziness over the last couple weeks, a couple wild ass stories, and we'll have a couple laughs. So stick around. We'll see you on the other side of the intro. Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, I'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Alright, it's been a little bit since the last uh, official Get the Net. We snuck in a straight cast into the great wide opens. Uh, Brad, myself, and Easton Fothergill. I think we scared him a little bit. The young man is uh, up and comer in the sport and first couple podcasts i think he's done but anyway check that out over on the youtube channel or on straightcast platform um but yeah if you haven't been following along my videos or anything uh i'll just give you a little bit of an update about what's going on here and why you might not have seen a podcast for the last couple weeks so uh if you follow the podcast you'll know i went down to the Bassmaster national qualifier down on you follow lake uh last month and um you know went on a On a little trip here, Ashley's due in a few weeks, and I figured I'd, you know, head on down and get one last little kick at the Elite Series and Bassmaster Classic can and come on up and do some child rearing. So, um, went down there a month before the due date, whatever, uh, leading the tournament after the first day, end up in ninth, and I'm just giving you the Coles notes here because it's, you know, it's been a few weeks now, but uh, anyway, on the last day, uh, fished, you know, was just throwing the cover on the boat, packing up, waiting for the check, um, which, by the way, the top 20 go to the national qualifier um, on Grand Lake in November. So got that to look forward to. Whoever wins that goes to the Elite Series and the Classic. Second and third also go to the Bassmaster Classic. So got something to look forward to there, a couple carrots to chase. But anyway, finished her up. Um, was just about to hit the road, 27 hours straight driving time, not counting gas or anything like that. And Ashley FaceTimes me and my wife and, you know, she's crying and I'm immediately thinking the worst. Um, but she, you know, eventually whatever can talk. She's like, yeah, I'm being induced. Uh, and then <laughs> didn't really have any answers. So I talked to the doctor and he's like, yeah, like you better get your ass home. You got between 10 and 30 hours before this baby comes. Like I said, look down at the GPS and it says 20 well it actually says one day and three hours so 27 hours that doesn't take into account any kind of traffic or border time or gas or food or you know restroom breaks or anything like that so I just started hauling ass um I was awake at 1 30 in the morning that day uh to, you know pack up the project m camper and the rental house and everything like that fish the third day of the tournament you know getting tired and uh just had to keep on giving her had to uh had to grind through a a handful of states and um yeah it was wild i just made it back i thought for sure i was gonna miss it i was trying to hop on flights from like birmingham nashville chicago had buddies you know on the horn i got to shout out my buddy brian gustison he was looking up flights and and looking at options for me as i was driving you know did the full uh just get gas and gas up at the next stop you know a couple uh couple incidents there if you're a trailer park boys fan you know ray you'll know what he's all about the the jugs and that was going down too um but anyway uh yeah made it back just in time yeah shout out to uh cbsa got me through quick i had all kinds of receipts and everything i had to deal with um you know went through all the proper channels there but i was good and speedy and i was so damn tired i missed the turnoff to kenora like in the last you know for the last hour and a half uh there's like a blizzard out i'm towing a damn boat i got my truck camper on it's a blizzard and uh yeah i didn't slow down for one of the 
one of the slowdown zones near Rainy River once I realized that I had gone the wrong direction. That's how tired I was. Mailboxes were running across the road. You legit hallucinate to 35 hour range and I've, uh, I've, you know, worked shift work forever. So I'm used to it. I kind of know the limits and there was no option. So I had to go beyond that limit and obviously wasn't safe, but it's kind of a one-off scenario. Uh, long story short, uh, had a little pullover and, and, uh, you know, luckily a fella understood and, and made it back and had a couple hours to spare and we had the youngster there. So it's been, uh, it's been busy, a uh, little Bowen month early, just a little six pounder, six, four, um, you know, good filler fish for the boys at, uh, Lake Fork this week. But, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. It's been, I haven't mentioned this on here ever before, but it's been eight years of trying and uh if you've ever experienced that it's no fun at all watching all your buddies have kids which is awesome and you know you're just kind of left behind and you're you don't really know what's going to happen it's tons of stress tons of money um you know but eventually it worked out that's kind of what gave me enough free time and and motivation in between to pursue the fishing industry a little bit better so i'm thankful for that you know we got to to get where we want to be um with our cabin and you know things like that so uh better late than never and uh couldn't be happier to have the little youngster on board so uh thanks everyone for reaching out on that but thought it was kind of a funny story and one hell of a busy weekend so uh been a little behind on the podcast but we're back at her tonight yeah so quick turnaround from the hospital was there for we stayed in the hospital for like five days and um, went to the Toronto Boat Show. And, of course, things can't go smooth for that. This is the Toronto Spring Fishing and Boat Show. I'm supposed to fly in Friday night, you know, fly back Sunday. Air Canada, really weird. Uh, flight got canceled <laughs> that morning. Uh, so I ended up just buzzing there for uh, for a glory lap. So just wanted to shout out the crew at Rapala and, and uh, Andy and everyone puts that sports show on. It was uh I was only there for like 22 hours, but it was a damn good time. And thanks to everyone who, uh, you know, came up and said hi and, and had a chat and lots of, lots of get the net listeners and lube tube watchers that, you know, you don't really realize you see a number on a, on a piece of paper or a number on a computer screen. But when you actually have that many people coming up to you and, uh, it's a pretty cool experience. So I've never gone to any sports show in Toronto before and, um, yeah, bit of an eye opener. So thanks everyone for, uh, for whipping by there and yeah just on the heavy putter around here sold the big lund lucky buyer got the the off season special um and you know my new one's been here since the fall got a bunch of new gear to throw on it uh really looking forward to it if you've been following the pro bass world you'll know that everyone's going live scope crazy and there's lots of new tech and just trying to navigate that a little bit you don't want to go too overboard um you know for me i'm I'm still fishing high stakes tournaments this year uh with the three bass master opens and the national championship now um so i'll probably go all out a little bit starting off uh something different this year i got a powertran impulse uh jack plate i'm excited about that there's i rig all my own boats so uh there's wireless controls and it's super heavy duty you know it handle lake of the woods and the great lakes and everything like that it's a big old motor you have swinging off of that thing so I want that to be the most sturdy part of the boat for sure, but this one's all electric. Pretty cool to have a little video on that thing coming out. And they also make a like a live scope turret. It's called the Foresight. Uh, it's attachment for the trolling motor, and I know your people's eyes are rolling into the back of their heads right now because all they've heard about is live scope. But like I said, I'm playing for keeps. So any little piece of technology that's going to help me out, uh, probably going to have on my boat if I you know can warrant it. Um, so this thing's pretty cool. Like I said, a lot of videos on all this stuff. And got a shout out Waterland Sunglasses. They're jumping on board this year. Uh, talked to Milliken last year about them. You know, he couldn't say enough good things. And he's not going to bullshit me and tell me they're awesome when they suck. And he's not going to allow a product like that to come out. Neither is any of the crew over at uh, Waterland Six Cents. So ran those down in Alabama. I've been, you know, had them on deck here forever waiting on them. And uh, got them. And then it's winter. So I can't accurately test out sunglasses the winter brought them down to bama absolutely dialed love them fit my big melon head if you got a big melon like a big bucket like me 
get the Hasket or the Milliken. I'll drop a code below. Um, use that at checkout. Save yourself 15 points. And you know they're already they're not gonna you're not gonna break the bank on them. You get the poly frames instead of the glass ones. A lot more affordable, especially throw that code in there. Uh, I've got a few buddies up here that have been running them already, and you know they've kind of told me they like them too. So they're the real deal. And you'll see the big wall of Crush City behind me. Um, I owe another tournament top ten to Crush City. Caught like 12 of my 14 bass down in Alabama on the cleanup crawl in the back of the jig. Same setup I was using last year at the Ozarks. Um, switched it up. I threw a little candy deal, the candy bug on there, like a June bug style. And I've got so much confidence in that trailer that, you know, it's easy to just pick up and go. This lake was an absolute dump. I say that about everywhere we go, but... Um, you know, plenty of the practice days, I didn't have a limit. The second day of the tournament, I actually didn't have a limit. I tried to boat flip a five pounder on a spinner bait and, uh, lost it. That was my first bite of the day on the second day of the tournament while leading. Never caught another bass for six hours, but anyway, definitely worth a look. Guys are crushing them on the freeloader. Um, I think our guest tonight actually did some freeloading on uh, Lake Fork and it's not a sponsor of his or anything. He's hiding it a little bit, but and you can see here, premium little segue here. I just happen to have this thing ready for lake trouts. But this is the BT Fishing Shadinator jig head. A lot of you have been asking about a three-quarter and one-ounce Smeltonator style jig head. And here it is. We've got it just in two colors. Brian's minnow, Bruce's minnow. These are our custom colors. Also available in the red line only at Lake of the Woods Sports. And we've got these things with 7 aught, you know, hooks up to 7 aught and weights up to one ounce. So she's a nice rig. It's got the same conical keeper and then it's got, uh, actually we put a flat spot on it. If you're into tying bucktails or anything like that, you can now tie onto this. Uh, if you follow me, you know I'm a big tankerer, um, always into the do it molds, uh, tankering on stuff, trying to find the next thing to for BT, trying to find a tournament edge. And uh, I like to do a lot of tying too. So I've been pouring a lot of jigs around here lately. Uh, Tyler Williams, our guest tonight has forced me to you know really explore the flipping jig side so made up some do it rock jigs put some rubber on them the last little bit and it's a good uh good pastime i went from last year to only thinking about fishing to this year where i have a little bit of downtime in the evenings you know between the youngster getting up and uh and i'll come, come on, on to, down to the garage and do some heavy putter and you know that's uh that's part of living in the north and our gear is always organized and there's uh there's lots of custom things you can do with making your own tackle so and before we get tyler on here got to remind you about the dried and tagged fish contest I talked to tyler the other day he runs the deal in uh in dryden and uh they're throwing some heavy coin at it that pot just keeps going higher and higher there's all kinds of fish you can see the list in the link below um gonna be heading up to the dryden walleye masters this year we'll probably tag a few more beforehand and it's just a little added excitement maybe you're not a tournament angler but you want to win some coin buy a ticket 20 bucks and if you haven't fished wabagoon before it's a absolute great time i actually just made some walleye jigs getting all teed up for the walleye masters but check, check that out. out in the description below and you'll see it in the commercial to nordic point lodge one of my slideshows at the uh during my seminar at the toronto boat show I actually had a live scope screen recording from nordic point um and people were just shocked at how many smallmouth we you know we had captured there was I had one on and there were like 40 following it in the video. So not something you see very often, really great fishery, really great spot, you know, got all the bases covered there. Check that out in the description below. All right, that's it. Let's get on uh, recent Bassmaster elite series qualifier. Met him in the opens last year. Absolute beauty. Uh, you know, he's as friendly as he seems on Bassmaster live and we're going to have a little chat with him. This outdoor content has been brought to you in part by Nordic Point Lodge. Located in northwestern Ontario, Nordic Point Lodge offers some of the finest fishing Canada has to offer. Whether you're looking for a family-friendly getaway or a corporate retreat, Nordic Point Lodge has you covered. 
They offer a luxury outdoor experience with five-star service. Check out the description below for more information. BT Fishing is a northern-born, small-town tackle brand. Focusing on innovating rather than imitating, BT has left a mark on all levels of competitive fishing from walleye tournaments all the way to the Bassmaster Classic. The full BT lineup is comprised of innovative tackle, carefully crafted using the highest quality components. Check out the Smeltinator Jig, Elite Marabou Jig, Crusher Jig, Clack Shot, Clean Jig, Smeltinator Underspin at more at sportsheadquarters.ca. We ship across Canada and the U.S. Use promo code GETTHENET for 10% off all products in the BT lineup. No, you're solid, bud. Yours is Sweet. probably looking better than mine right now. I was going to say, we're going to probably have a couple blips, but... <laughs> You tell me you're sitting in a parking lot in Texas. <laughs> yeah, it's the only place I can get. Well, I thought Wi-Fi, but something's going wrong with their Wi-Fi, but I've got cell service at the moment, so I'm hoping that carries through. Whose parking lot are you in? Uh, it's a place called Go Fish Cafe. Oh, you're definitely going to have someone come up and talk to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Fork is like, I can see it with my eyes, so... Oh, uh, yeah, but you're going to be like folklore, real, you know, big dog <laughs> down there. Yeah, I had to, I had to warn you. It may happen. I got to try to be nice to people if they do not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not exactly low key in that truck. Um, no, that's what I saw. <laughs> I remember when I first saw you on the opens and like this thing is the rig of all rigs. I should put a picture <laughs> up of it. <laughs> and i was I actually, just like i got a new one it's even more of a rig it's a dually <laughs> yeah like jt can probably do an oil change without even leaning over in that thing he just walks <laughs> walks under with the filter <laughs> <laughs> jt <laughs> he was going i was so they drove us through for the way in the last day and i was going to hook my truck back up to my boat and I see this little kid run between the truck and boat. Well, it was actually JT going to help me <laughs> back up, but I thought there was a kid going to get hit. <laughs> yeah, you thought you were in for a lawsuit and it was just JT helping you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't ride on him too much. I actually ran into him on the water at uh, at the first open of the year this year. We we were each looking for spawning fish and we crossed yeah. paths like he was going one way out, you know, in the same bay. And we drove by each other and he looks at me like standing on the big lund at, you know, at six, six, my boat's already a foot higher than everyone else is. Right. He's like, you're literally standing three and a half feet taller than I am right now. It's I was like, yeah, and I still can't see any. So what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, um, no. Well, it's good to have you on, man. Um, after uh after you qualified i always wanted to have you on you got a lot of personality uh you know easy guy to talk to everyone seems to like you and you That's know with good. your with your recent <laughs> kind of bass lives and a lot more eyes on the elites uh you know tons of people from up here in the north uh watch a lot of that and i got so many texts like oh i like that guy you know that guy <laughs> like, yeah awesome. i'll get him on the podcast and then, and then on the last day of four I was like, shit, he's going to win the tournament. He's going to be on every podcast this week. Like, <laughs> I, didn't, dude, I did I not like, want you to win, but we wanted to get you on, bud. <laughs> right. I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, I told my dad, I'm like, I'm going to just do my thing and 30 pound him down. Cause I don't know if I was like in the right area for like a lot of sevens, eights and nines. Like there was a lot of fives and sixes. And I'm like, if he messes, if any of them mess up, I'm going to, I'm going to sneak in there. But, but apparently it's the elites and they don't mess up. Or they catch no. 11 pounders. <laughs> yeah, that was unreal. <laughs> I can't compete I, with that. <laughs> yeah, oh man. I never wasted so much time watching live in my entire life. Not that it was a waste of time, but like I didn't do anything else. Like I was glued. <laughs> I was having a blast just because they were biting what I like to throw. Yeah, weird. I, <laughs> I got to bring it up too. I was just talking to uh, the uh, one of the guys from Rapala, Canada. And we peaked your, you know, you're throwing the freeloader on your, on your white. I want to uh, be able to buy them. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll hook you up. I'll, I'll send All you right. some of mine. But I was laughing my ass off because I was like, Tyler Williams is the only guy that finds a way 
Like that's that's your uh, that's your moping rig. That's your finesse jig head minnow is just put a freeloader on a whatever <laughs> giant ass rubber jig. Yes. <laughs> Jacking them on twenty two pound line. That was awesome. It was so fun. The way they bit it too was like it wasn't like a Demiki rig bite. It was like rip the rod out of your hands. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't have to run them around the boat either. They were just in. Oh, some of them, were, so I don't know why. Like, I was watching some of the footage now that I could watch it, and people are, like, catching eights and nines and tens. They're just kind of, like, laying on their side and coming to them. Like, why was mine so feisty? <laughs> I like, had to, my nine nine flew, like, three foot out of the water. I posted a video last night of it. I well, like, you, I think on the jig bite, like, or any, like, you know, bottom bait bite, you set the pace when you drill them, you know, you know, when you do the big bill dance tally whack, they're like, all right, it's on then. But uh, you know, when, when one bites uh, a smeltinator in 30 feet of water and eight ounce jig, and it's just like, keep swimming then. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. (laughs) But damn you, man, I got, I've I've had the molds out the last couple evenings, um, tying rubber jigs. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy because i can't you know all those evergreen ones are sold out across pretty much north america since he won watts bar on one yeah even <laughs> i, I have a living rubber out. i'm like save some of those like to the side please because i'm gonna need some <laughs> it's my two like it's all i throw <laughs> yeah i wish i would have known about like you know about thumping the big three quarter around after because when uh I didn't pick it up till Ozarks just because it's a brown jig lake. You know, yeah. it's like pretty much on the welcome sign when you get there, brown jig. Right. Um, but then when I went back to Eufaula for the, you know, the nationals last month, I was like, oh, it's all I threw, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's Do you ever wish it was a one ounce, your big jig? Often. I wish it was like a one and a half ounce sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because you don't like... People are like, you know, if a fish is tough to catch, people are looking at it like, oh, right. uh, you know, and, and I did the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay, if I throw a drop shot or an eight ounce shaky head or whatever, it's like, no, nah, just put something totally belligerent <laughs> down there. The heavier it is, the faster it falls, the less time they have to think about it. And then the heavier <laughs> it is, the more you can just shake the shit out of it right. without That's moving kinda- it anywhere. The white jig, I had a lot of them eat it at, like, there was a lot of reaction bites, but there was also a lot that would fall to the boat. I'd just be like, like with the rod, and suddenly it would be in their mouth. And I'm like, wow, that was kind of cool. Got him. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of that, I think, is, like, when it starts making that upswing. And then also yeah. what I think it is, and maybe you'll notice this too, but when you're short lining them like that, that thing's shaking way more than if there's 50 feet of fluorocarbon, like, soaking up the shake in between. Right. She it, just no paint shaker down there. Yeah. Well, I always had this impression too that Texas bass, like they have to react. Like they won't eat anything with sight, which I think is the case a lot. But like a lot of those fish would just sit there for like 10, 15 seconds and just stare at it and all of a sudden just grab it like a smallmouth back home in cold water. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> like there's a clip of a seven pounder I caught on day three and that's exactly how that went. Huh. Like hitting a wall on the hook set though. <laughs> it scared me oh, man it was awesome i just before this i saw a post on instagram and it was like bass 365 or something obviously someone who didn't watch a whole lot of bass live because they were, or doesn't follow you because they were like see you can still catch them on a jig you don't need that forward facing bullshit and it's just <laughs> it's you standing there with two jigs <laughs> that's funny i'm like you avoided the uh <laughs> the net that everyone's cast on the rookies dude i've like gotten i like i've of course i've gotten a couple of comments about forward facing but like everyone's been so nice to me and i really appreciate it yeah yeah i mean that that's uh i mean you're just friendly out of the gate not you know just doing your thing and it's hard not hard not to like you why would someone be a dick to you right i don't know i just i figured somebody would be mad in the comments and everything everybody was pretty good i was like wow thank you yeah good deal so how's everything been going like with the elites i heard the uh i heard the initial meeting was an absolute gong show (laughs) (laughs) yeah that was a little crazy i was i don't know (laughs) but other than that it's been going good it's fun 
yeah it was a little awkward at first but then like once i talked to people everybody liked me i think we'll see <laughs> they were nice to me anyways yeah you're good you're good personality goes a long way like yeah. you know the guys that are a little more quiet it's going to take them a little more time to kind of get in yeah there. i mean, I mean it's I'm not, I'm not here to kick everyone's butt either i just like fishing and want to find my place yeah, well, you're hitting a pretty good byproduct of just liking fishing right now. <laughs> what are you in yeah. AOI, like third or fourth or something? I think I'm in like eighth or ninth, but it's oh, up man. there. Not far from it. Would you get it Toledo Ben? 20 I something? Was, yeah, I was 19th. You got a 19th and a third? Or f- uh, fourth. Fourth. Yeah. And you're <laughs> yeah. eighth. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty. And what's crazy is I'm like fourth in rookie of the year. Yeah, it's just the same thing. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of like everyone's blaming the new guys, uh, you know, for such a strong start because of the scope. But like when I first did the opens last year, like that was my first time seeing everyone and first time really doing it. And, you know, I I get what they're like, where they're coming from, because it's like, it's easy to get your ass kicked and just blame this, but I was using right. the scope. So I was like, well, what are we blaming? You know, that the, the kid got DQ'd from the first one. So it's like, ah, oh, we'll just call them <laughs> cheaters. Yeah. They're all cheaters. <laughs> Info gatherers. So that was like the big thing. Right. You know? And, and, uh, these guys have unlimited time to pre-fish and everything like that. And it was like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't no. matter if, you know, if someone dedicates their whole life to it or if someone just shows up, at the end of the day, if you want to qualify and you want to stay there and you want to fish for a living, you know what? There's no asterisk. There's no comment box on the score sheet that says caught them on scope, caught them uh, without pre-practice, caught them here. Like right. you got to up your game. And I, I think when everyone kind of wraps their head around that, like I said, right now they're blaming the scope. Um, next yeah. thing it might be info, but it's just like, it, it seems know. like you guys are under the spotlight more than, you know, more than yeah. any of the other rookie classes and the scope's an easy thing to lean on it is i mean it's a weird rookie class too because i just think the gauntlet we all went through like everybody's really close everybody's kind of competing with each other and it's just happened to be really high level yeah that the gauntlet is right that sucked i talked to you at st <laughs> lawrence st lawrence was number six and um you had your worst finish of the year there and you were just like i'm done you know yeah, just like crippled fishing, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah and it like man it was just i don't know i don't know what it, i'm sure it looks the same right now or feels the same but it was just like you cannot you just couldn't do good enough you went on your tear at the end of the year and you had all solid finishes before that other than st lawrence and like you right. you're made her in pretty healthily <laughs> yeah it wasn't bad i was I was happy that that last day on Harris, I just went out and got my 14 pounds pretty early. And I was like, we're in, (laughs) there's no stress. I just got to get back to the boat ramp. Like, and then like watching my buddy, Kyle, he was shaking and everything. (laughs) Like, I'm I'm glad that wasn't me. (laughs) Oh man. I was stuck at a, at the Opopka lock. I don't think I could have fit another bag of nicotine pouch in my damn lip (laughs) that day. They're flying all over the boat. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Then I get to losing them. I'm like, I'm just not meant to be here this right. year. <laughs> like, things cannot uh, go worse. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, it is good. To, like, for me, it doesn't hurt at all to see, you, like, we already knew that everyone was going to hold their own, you know, yeah. and, and the season's still early. There's, you're still going to have to do a lot of adapting and going oh, to yeah. Florida Max and ending in small multi time. And, you know, it's not, right six of the six rookies are not going to be in the top 10 at aoy at the end of the year it'll probably bounce out a little more for sure they're going to do very well and really good chance that a rookie wins aoy um but it'll balance out and just kind of but for now it's fun to watch because it's like (laughs) you know you hear all these guys bitching you you can't compete with this can't compete with that it's like well you know we've been there like we we know how good you guys are and had to fish against (laughs) your asses all last year (laughs) <laughs> i know it's it's almost like too we came in with something to prove so we all like pre-practice really hard studies as much as we can like we didn't hunt all off season 
well, Trey kind of did, but Trey's just that good. But <laughs> we we all fished really hard just right after we qualified. I went home for like a month and then back on the road. Yeah. Well, China. even Kyle went and pre-practiced down in Texas and I talked to him. He's like, you know, and he's, he's a little bit older than you guys. He's still super young and, uh, he's got a yeah. lot of, a lot of responsibilities and everything. And he's like, I'm going to pre-practice like I have to. And I talked to him after he's like, man, like I'm, I'm like burnt out already, you know, already. And, yeah. and I told him, I was like, yeah, like we, you know, we harp on these guys for pre-practicing all the time and like, must be nice. And I'm like, it's so much work and it I don't is. know if I had the time, if I would even do it. Like you guys right. are so dedicated, the discipline to go pre-practice for two weeks is, it's right. crazy. Like you have to put your entire life on hold. Right. I mean, that's kind of, after the St. Lawrence, I like, cause I was supposed to go back to Maine and like, we had like what a month off or something like that. And I was going to hang out with my parents and everything. And, I went back for like a day, grabbed everything I needed and told them, I'm like, I've got to win one of these if I stay on the road and then yeah. stayed on the road and actually, or I have a shot at winning one. I, I wasn't, cause you know how to go is it's fishing, yeah. but <laughs> then I ended up winning one and then top 10 and then top 10 and got in. And I, but like me and my dad were having a conversation about that earlier. And he's like, if you didn't do that, you probably wouldn't have made it. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It paid off. There's a lot of people that pre-practice where it doesn't pay off. And it's just like, well, there goes three weeks and yeah, you know, a couple of grand kind of thing. So it's not, right. and don't kid yourself. There were lots of elite guys pre-practicing for Texas too. It just oh yeah worked out for some and didn't for others. Right. No, I just, but, I found the part of the lake with no trees because I was sick of hitting my trolling motor off trees. And I went and fished that the whole time. <laughs> I figured that out in pre-practice. And then that's what I did in the actual tournament weird fishing trees in texas <laughs> yeah well like 90 percent of the lakes all forest and i'm like i don't like this so i went to the part that was had nothing yeah some brush and some rocks and some tires and just fun stuff <laughs> those tire fields kill me <laughs> <laughs> same here they have I've big never... them too <laughs> obviously you don't have those in maine no Nothing Every time like you that. idle over one, it looks like it should be on a side imaging commercial. They just show up so good. You can see everything perfect. And it's like, that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> right. You'll get the ones with like the real big skitter tires and say you like throw a jerk bait over them. And all of a sudden one just shoots up from inside the tire. And you're like, oh, wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were cool. some at, where were they? Watts Bar. Watts Bar had some, I think. Yeah, I think uh, you follow Oklahoma had a couple too. Oh, maybe that's where it was. Watts Bar, they're probably just like, well, this place is doomed. Let's just throw all our garbage in. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they did. And I got to fish the garbage. Yeah. Yeah, you blasted them there. That was impressive <laughs> without your trolling motor on the first day. <laughs> yeah, that sucked. <laughs> my, my back that was good, though. So like, bad. There's a lot of people that just would throw a shit fit and have a million excuses and make a video about it at the end of the day and come in with zero bass. And <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got on your hands and knees, <laughs> you turned yeah. the trolling motor with your live scope and drifted your way to a win. <laughs> it's insane. I know that I caught that one five pounder at like kind of towards the end. And I was like, we got a shot. We survived today. And I didn't fish like a lot of things that I planned on fishing just because I had Losing to like adapt to. Oh boy. I got you again. I got you again. All right. Go ahead. You got, yeah. I lost it five pounder. Oh uh, yeah. That five pounder at the end of the day, like it helped me survive that day. And then I was like excited cause I didn't really fish anything I planned on fishing just cause I needed like things I can get one cast on. And then it just worked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That was awesome. It was meant to be, it was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, bud. So you're, are you staying on the road all year this year? Like, is that the play? Yeah. I won't go home until after the St. Lawrence. Crazy. <laughs> Living in a box that goes in the back of a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, man, you guys are changing the job spec of what professional angling is going to look like. 
It's, you know, it's no longer just go to nine tournaments, two sports shows, three Facebook posts and hunt and hang out on the beach the rest of your life. Like the right. bar is raised so high now. It is. That's, pr- I think that's probably what started the whole, like everybody being mad. I just like yeah. fishing. So I'd go fun fishing anyways, even if it wasn't pre-practice. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to, uh. I had John B on here, um, a few months ago. I know he came up ice fishing with me one day and he, you yeah. know, he was talking about Maine and stuff. And he said like, there was catch and kill small mouth tournaments and there's not that r- many real big derbies there. So to have you come out of Maine is pretty freaking wild. Yeah, it's cool. I've, there's a little bit of competition back home. They're getting like the fish are old, so they get smart quick and I don't know. I've won a lot of main tournaments, but it, once I got my first opens, it was like, wow, these are real tournaments. Yeah. 225 is a freaking big number. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was used to like 50 being a big number. <laughs> yeah. That uh, Bass Nation qualifier had like, it didn't fill up. It was like 160 something. And it was like, oh, nice. She's a Tuesday nighter, <laughs> you yeah. know, after the 225 fields. I would have, I wish I could have fished that one. <laughs> It's just, I like that place. No, I already had enough opens. Got like, I kind of kept it quiet that I was going in, or I didn't make a post or nothing. I was, you know, sneaking in. And then Brad and Raz, Raz ended up winning it. But like Danny, Chance, all the boys just came and they're like, We're in it. I was like, ah. in. <laughs> yeah. I was like, because me and me and Brad and Raz all fished the same zone when we were to the open last year. I was like, Oh, baby, I'm going to get the milk run to myself. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> How we different show was up and like uh it was so different like no really? one caught him on crankbaits yeah wow it's probably like i wished it was like i pre-practiced for it not being a crankbait tournament and then i caught all my fish on a jig surprisingly yeah well <laughs> I, as I, like, one on a jig nice that's what i like to hear. yeah <laughs> and i i caught 12 of mine I actually never even caught a limit on the second day, but I caught 12 of 14 on a jig, the other two on a mag spinner bait. I see. But it was like 300 brush piles and get six bites. And if you lose two, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. That's how I like to fish, to be honest with you. That's like yeah, my favorite. That's how it was. Rad one off like a, you know, a hard spot, just counting boulders with a jig. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. But yeah, I, I talked to Milliken before and, and got like the full crankbait lesson because I've never caught a bass on a deep diving crankbait in my entire life still. I can't. So, I throw it and they run away from it and then I just throw a jig in there and they eat it. And I'm like, why would I even bother with this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're not tied to it, if you don't have like the deep crank in history or like, you know, oh, I just can't wait for that bite, then yeah. why even why even have it? Right. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm learning a lot of that. I'm like, I need to be versatile, but I'm not sure if that's my kind of versatile. Yeah. So your weapons, from what I can tell, obviously the brown jig, the brown rubber jig. Uh, yeah. You're on the flapping hog. You mix in Yo. the jerk bait. Yo. You guys have a sneaky little jerk bait on the go, and then uh, <laughs> you got your new uh, your new minnow rig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my version of it. <laughs> what else are you gonna get into? Like, do you are you for smallmouth country you're from maine you know how to smallmouth fish yeah i mean i still try to force like tube jigs and heavy tubes and little jigs and stuff but i know how to drop shot and all that but i uh i'm pretty i'm like not bad with a glide bait either nice nice i just kind of like a sleeper thing yeah that worked in the last one yeah not for me apparently I threw it at like two <laughs> fish and they ran away from it. And I went right back to the jig and started catching it again. <laughs> Why? My rods went from like six rods the first day down to four rods, down to three rods. Then I tried to do two on the last day, but I had to break a jerk bait back out to get the first fish and then got the rest all on a jig. So, <laughs> ended up yeah. Like the funny part is like you hear the commentators and all the you know the pro analysts are like well these boys are gonna have to learn to get more versatile i was like eh <laughs> i'm pretty sure tyler's gonna figure out how to catch one a jig everywhere they go <laughs> just gotta find my part of the lake <laughs> yeah i remember idling past you in the door canal 
and you're out in the middle of it throwing a jig. <laughs> yeah, you look so confused. <laughs> like, what are you doing, man? You're just like, if I'm going down, I'm going down my way. <laughs> you know, that's I would if I didn't make it because of that, I would have lived with it too. Because I know if I tried to throw a Sanko out a lily pad, I would have definitely gone down. Yeah. Well, you made the right call. You had a hell of a derby there. I wish I would have went stump humping with you. Yeah, it was actually kind of surprising. I just thought I'd fish like a, like go catch some fish and then turned into a good one. It's like, that was a tough tournament though. Yeah, that uh, that wasn't my favorite. <laughs> yeah, sure. sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about what? <laughs> Not me and your favorite. <laughs> oh man, I was talking to Kyle and Wesley the other day. And I haven't talked to Wesley since like the Harris or since Wheeler. And he's like, he's like, Hey, tell Brucey the only reason he never made uh, the elites is because he fished behind me on every grass patch on Watts bar. He's like four different spots. He's like, I, uh, he just, but I, there was two days. It obviously didn't happen both days. I was screwed either way. Right. I was just like, thanks for twisting the knife. You little fucker. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like, for the first half of the year, I kept getting in rotations behind John Garrett, and I finally smartened up by, like, the fourth event. And I was like, I'm not going to get behind him again. I'm going to get in front of him. And then I started <laughs> catching fish. <laughs> we never ran into each other in the water last year, hardly, which is crazy. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah. I, uh, always always Millican. Really, I never saw him hardly. I was like, I think we're fishing similar stuff, but I don't know where he is. Yeah, and Garrett was your guy. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's a good guy to be on the same stuff with. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's a cranking king, so. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't on the ledges. It was usually when it was like brush. <laughs> he always had my brush. Yeah. The old target. Yeah. He opens, turn you into a professional isolated target jumper. <laughs> that's, that's what I was good at beforehand. I don't know why I got away from it. I was like, that's what I do back home. I might as well start doing it here. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of boulders, you just throw at stumps and tires and whatever the hell else yeah. you see down there. When you find a boulder, it's like, oh, this is just like home. <laughs> Watts Bar was good. <laughs> Oh, uh, um, um, so you did the opens the last couple of years, right? Did you, you just like did some divisions or did you did all nine last year? I looked quick. I don't remember. Yeah, I did. So 2021, I did one division. I actually finished 10th in points when I was like 19. Nice. And then, then I jumped into all nine, got my teeth kicked in for a couple and then finally started to learn some things by the end of the year and translated into last year. Yeah, that's another thing people don't understand either. Like when they just see people they haven't heard of before showing up and doing well, it's like, yeah, you still got to yeah. pay your dues. <laughs> yeah, I McKinney was of... like the one exception that didn't take. Well, him and Milliken never took their pre, pre, -op, you know, early open yeah. ass kicking. They were pretty good when they jumped in. I was like, I jump in, but like that's what i had to do back home too is like i jumped into the adult tournaments before i was even like nearly ready just so i could like learn quick and then it took, it took a couple years but it came around were you bossing it back home like were you winning every cup you know every other derby kind of thing yeah and that's just like that was, the next step it was like well i want to like i usually could win about half the ones i fished and then I'd jump, like, there'd be some, like, the last year that I fished, give or take, it was a good offshore year, so the fish were way out, but I was, like, a lot of tournaments, I was winning by six, seven, eight pounds, and I was, oh, it man. was time to go, but then I went <laughs> back last year, and I, like, I don't think I even won one, I got second, like, three times out of, like, five that I fished, I'm like, what has happened? That's what <laughs> like, happens, man, you, people see you too. jump, you know, jump out, do good, and then you, you, you lose your local status really quick and yeah. everyone at home, you know, this is what I've experienced up here. Cause there's some freaking dusters up here. Like you yeah. gotta, you know, you gotta beat Gussie in every tournament. And then there's yeah. 10 or 12 other teams that are like all right there where you're all trading places with. 
you give them an extra year or two on that lake while you're on the road, you're not just you know, coming back. <laughs> no. Like, it's, we had like a really wet spring too. And a lot of the fish stayed up in like eight foot grass. And I hate that. Like I, I won't, I won't fish that. <laughs> so I just. Eight I foot grass? It, just no. Just no, not that grass. It's like <laughs> cabbage grass and so like weightless Sankos out in it, just waiting for it. Like, no, I'm, I'm a whole jump. Just go rock to rock to rock to tree to rock. But they didn't set up on that stuff too good. Dang. <laughs> we had one. I fished against John B in it, and it was a smallmouth tournament that typically is seven fish, but like 25 pounds is like the biggest ever weighed in. Mm -hmm. And we hit like pretty early, like 27 pounds, like the biggest limit that had ever come in in that tournament. Like might have been 26 and a half or something like that. But then we go to weigh it. There's like two people that caught even bigger bags and then like everything was stacked so close. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's just, when the records are, fall, they man. fall hard. Yeah, they do. That's how it usually looks up here. Yeah. But um, you never, when you're, when you started the opens, you never did the big pre-practice thing. Like that was a recent. That was, yeah, that was kind of like, well, at first I thought I could kind of just fish them and fish them. And then I kind of like, as it went on, I realized how much like work I had to really put in. Yeah. And then really buckled down that last year. So it's going to be hard to answer because it's no one's ever had to go through it before. But when you go from like, you know, throwing you're fully all in right now you jt trey um i don't know who else is doing the the like the big pre-practice but you're fully yeah. all in you throw everything you have at it is the end game to just learn as much as you can about all these lakes you keep going to and then eventually be able to let your foot off the gas a little bit and be able to or do you like, think you're gonna have to keep like this pace for your whole career I'm, I'm not really sure what to expect because like right now it's like that because I'm marking a lot of spots that won't change over time, whether it's a rock pile, bluff end, just anything that's like kind of sneaky almost like a local would have. Yeah. And I'm like, but I don't know if how much it's going to change like over the next few years. Some of it I know will stay the same, so I'll have to gauge it how it goes. Right. Like I've got stuff I found on, like I stayed after Toledo last year to like try to learn the lake some more and i found some of that stuff and then when we went back it was still really good and i was like right. okay this is just a good spot no matter what it's I just it. trying to figure out what's that kind of stuff and what's constantly changing yeah i got a feeling you guys in like 10 or 12 years are going to be bitching about the next rookie class <laughs> <laughs> i told myself i'm like i'm never going to complain i'm going to just learn it <laughs> like i you won't catch me being one of those guys yeah, I know. I know. And that's why, you know, that's why everyone likes you. That's why everyone wants to hear from you. You're easy to watch on live. That was my biggest, you know, biggest concern about like the, a younger wave of people coming in because, right. you know, watching bass fishing is boring. Like I'm a bass nerd and yeah. it's still, you know, oh, it no. gets a little dry. So if, if people are getting younger and younger and, and, you know, you don't really see the personalities develop as much. And, you know, when you come out, like that's, what's going to save the sport. I think is like, oh, I'd love to, if be it's going to be that it. boring, you may as well, you know, hear someone crack some jokes and. Right. Yeah. I didn't know. We all like live and work, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, just... I hear a lot of compliments about you on live and yeah, it's uh, obviously I don't have to tell you, but keep that shit up, man. It's fun to watch. <laughs> I just, I like being on live. I just, do stuff and be myself it seems like i haven't got a bad review yet does your back ever get sore from fishing barefoot uh so i'm still running if i stand in the wrong spot yes i'm still running a 2022 skier and i've got a spot on the deck in the padded deck that i've like worn down <laughs> it's not as fluffy as like two inches over so i have to yeah. keep making sure i like plant my foot in a little different spot every time and then i'm good it, it's like padded enough that I get a little bit of support. I got gotcha. you. The old flat spot. <laughs> yeah. You'll be like me. And what do you got? 12 years till you're my age. You're going to be wearing white new balances, doing <laughs> back exercises. I have to do a 12 minute oh, stretch yeah. every morning to make sure I'm ready to scope. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's torture, man. 
<laughs> you just need some goggles, right? <laughs> like yeah, I saw, I saw Ed Lawford and had those and yeah. whatever. He had 10 pounds of cable hanging off his head. and <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see that part. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our buddies up here actually is a he's a big YouTuber, and he had him out ice fishing. Like he had him probably a little more dialed than Lawford did, but it was kind of cool because he could put a scope in one spot and then go yeah. hop around and see. Right. No, that it, is kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be cool to have. Like, I got one of those wireless uh, live scope turrets this year, like the twelve volters that move. Like, imagine yeah. just putting that in the middle. And yeah. setting your scope to a hundred feet and just being the boss of that area. Like you just go with your auger and your rod and you can turn it <laughs> right. behind you. Just start looking. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That would be perfect. Yeah. I saw some crazy riggings on your boat that I'm going to talk to you off air because we don't need to air any of it. Cause honestly, oh. like you learn that the hard way when you're young. Like if you buy a piece of technology and talk about it, you're just making yourself have to buy that every year now and then looking for the right. next thing. Like you got to get a, a year or two in on whatever yeah. the event is. Right. I mean, I try not to talk about it a lot anyways, because people are tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, what happened when Zell Dane comes running up to your boat with the ca sticks of camera in your face at uh, <laughs> Toledo? <laughs> I guess I had to explain it a little bit. <laughs> it's like, Wow. <laughs> You should get some decoy old flashers on the boat. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be funny. Show up with nothing. I know how to yeah. read a flasher too growing up ice fishing days. They better oh. watch out for that. Yeah, I had one at my bow on my trolling motor. Really? Oh, yeah, it was wicked. The old, like the guys that I mean, they all call it the Demiki rig now, whatever. Everyone thinks it came from Cherokee. Like the OG guys yeah. that came out with that thing uh, yeah. were walleye anglers from here, like, you know, within two hours where I live. And they only fished off the tiller, never trolling motor and wow. uh, pure flasher. Even in like the first, you know, those like 1197 humming birds when those were getting big, right. they wouldn't like, they couldn't do what they did on their flasher on those. So they stuck it out on the flasher until 2d got way better. I see. I, yeah. uh, I know even growing up in Maine, like a Demiki rig was one of the first things I learned just because you go out with your 2d to start getting them. Yeah. Jigging a minner. Yep. You feel like you <laughs> like, and it's like that he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my big pet peeve is people calling it a Demiki rig because Oh. Well, you you know, because it's like, it's it's the one, the two, two things have, you know, kind of started in this region in bass fishing. One's the marabou hair jig right there. Yeah. And the other's the jig head minnow, you know, the smeltinator was around in like 2005 yeah. or whatever. So, um, but That's true. so we're, we've always been playing with minnows along the way. And I don't want to discredit the Demiki armor shad. That is actually... Right. Back in the day, that was the number one lake trout bait because I it's still sand. throwing a ton myself. I think that's why I call it. That. <laughs> yeah. But I just I can't remember the last time I've actually seen someone catch one on it. And I'm like, <laughs> this brand's getting a lot of credit for nothing. <laughs> right. I don't know. I do pretty good on it. <laughs> Shut Maybe. up. You're you're uh <laughs> sorry. <laughs> don't don't stop out my point like that. Fluke. <laughs> Yeah, no, they did win Cherokee on it. That yeah. were you at that open? Uh I, I was at one of the Cherokee opens. I'm not sure if it was that one. I was at the one that Brian knew had like 19 pounds the first day or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't really study that much. I probably should have studied more. How many snags <laughs> did you get with your jig there? That was a steep, steep sucker. Well, that was the weird thing is I, I didn't really have my like thing going, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't know if I got on the road and like lost confidence in the jig for a little while there, just because I thought I had to be doing all kinds of different stuff by the book. Yeah. And then I was trying to like throw a little 2.8 Kai Tech down the bluffs and stuff. And I was catching some good fish, but now I wish I could go back with my jig and be like, all right, this is what <laughs> we're doing now. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
since the nineties, every like Bassmaster magazine and all the things would be like, if you're throwing a jig, you're fishing for the win. It's, you know, yeah. you're only looking for big fish. It's like, no, like it's a bass, like one pound bass eat 10 inch glide baits all the time. Like, yep. you know, I, I was using a three quarter ounce jig at you fall and filled out my brutal day two limit on little 14 inch spots on a three quarter ounce jig with a full cleanup craw on it. Like it's just fishing, <laughs> right. but it's one of those right. things that gets ingrained to your head. And it's like, no, nope, that ain't part of the handbook. Right. <laughs> I know. I think maybe being from where I was too, I was trying to like really base everything off of that. And then I finally found my own groove and it's been good. I kind of found it. Like you fall at Oklahoma, like it took a while. And then now that makes getting... sense. That was the TSN turning point. That was, that was the one. <laughs> and then we bombed the next one because they don't bite jigs there apparently. And then, but after that, we got them again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You fall up, then St. Lawrence. Where'd we go after that? Oh, Watts. Yeah. Then you won. Yeah. Yeah. And huh. I haven't, I haven't really had a bad one since. I know a bad one's coming at some point, but I usually, I usually find some, somewhere they'll bite it. As long as bass keep eating a rubber jig, you'll be fine. Yeah, they've done it for a while, so I hope they don't stop oh, anytime damn. soon. <laughs> yeah, it's only been like 40 or 50 years. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was square rubber before. Yeah, I think I got some of that too. I got to get the round stuff rocking. Yeah, it's a good stuff. Um, all right, man. Well. We're starting to break up here pretty good, so probably a good time to to cut you loose. I know you're in a parking <laughs> lot. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to wheel over, and I know uh, lots of folks in the north are rooting for you. And keep at it, man. Sounds good. Thank you. It was nice being on here. <laughs> All right, bud. We'll See take care. Later. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.